Mathematics Lesson 31 Topic Financial Mathematics 1 Critical Language Awareness Turn to Lesson 31 in the Learner's Workbook. This lesson includes an individual activity with self-assessment. Integration This lesson integrates with loans and investments which are important aspects you will need to understand for this lesson and for your place in the financial world. Prior Knowledge you worked with financial mathematics in grade 11. Your previous experience with this topic and the knowledge and skills you developed then will inform and enhance what you learn in this lesson. Lesson Overview In this lesson you will Calculate the value of N in the formulae for compound interest and reduce balance depreciation by using logarithms. Hi guys, welcome to the learning channel, the grade 12 financial mathematics lessons. My name is Mark. My name is Mbele Pongola and I hope you're going to have a great time with you on these lessons on financial maths on grade 12. Absolutely, financial maths has got to be the best topic of the entire grade 12 syllabus. We love doing the grade 11 topics and we're really seriously looking forward to dealing with the grade 12 topics. Let's have a look at what we're going to deal with in this very first lesson. If you, if you look here, we're dealing with learning outcome one, which is number and number relationships. The lesson overview. In this lesson, what we will deal with is calculating the value of N in financial maths formulae, particularly the ones you did in grade 10. Um, the one is this the compound interest formula. And of course, in grade 11, you dealt with the depreciation formula. Before we start with this lesson, let us look back to the formula we, we did in grade 11 and grade 10. First of all, we're going to look at the simple interest. What is simple interest? We know that simple interest, we get an interest once a year, and it is depending on the original amount. Let's look at the formula. We have A, and the A stands for the future value, and P, which is the present value, I is the interest rate, and N is the time period, which is how many years are we putting our interest right the formula for compound interest very 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 interesting here what happens is that the money you put the money in it grows to the end of the year and you go into the next year and the interest is worked out on that accumulated amount so in other words hey money is going to make money what does the formula look like let's have a look clearly you'll notice that you're dealing with an exponent now a accumulated amount, P is your present value, your I is your interest, but now you have an N as an exponent. And also guys, do not forget the formulas for depreciation. Let's have a look at them. Here they are. This formula is for linear depreciation and the last one is for reducing balance depreciation. What Mvelo said is very, very important to um, people. You need to go back and revise that grade 10 and 11 stuff. We're going to use a lot of this um, this year, so be aware that you need, we're going to use those formulas. So let's have some fun with the first example. Let's have a look at it. Right, let's look at this. Mpor invests 3,000 Rand in an account paying 8% per annum compounded annually compound interest formulae it's going to be annual very very important annual okay remember we spoke about um, in grade 11 it was the quarterly the monthly all those kind of different compounding periods but now we're dealing with an annual interest rate let's have a look how long will it take for the investment to double now let's look well we all know the formula for compound interest it is A equals P1 plus I to the power of N. So let's, let's substitute the values in. The present value is 3,000. The final amount is 6,000. The interest rate is 0,08. And clearly, people, this is so important. And I want you to focus on what we're going to say. Don't forget to make that a decimal. So often they put the 8 As in. As you always emphasize that, yeah. yeah. And they don't, they don't realize to make it a decimal. Divide by 100, and then it works brilliantly. And then let's continue with this. Right, so we've got 1 plus 0, 0,8 to the power of n. Well, 
1 plus 0, comma 0 to 8, 1 comma 0, 8 to the power of n. What happens next? We divide both sides by 3,000, and we're left with 2 equals 1 comma 0, 8 to the power of n. And Vela, can you see this equation? It's probably quite a difficult equation to solve, and we probably need you know, a, a, a technique. What, what do you call that technique? We have to apply the rules of logs. Logarithms, very critical section. If you if you haven't done it, go back and revise that section and um, come back to us on this. But we're going to pursue with some basic logarithms. Let me show you why this, this equation is a little bit of a problem and how to deal with it. Let's have a look. You can clearly see, and, and probably Inveda will bear me out here, that this is not a nice equation to solve. If you go back to grade 10, you clearly, if we look at a very easy equation, watch this. If you had, for example, let's have a look at, say, we had 2 to the n equals 8. Now, this is really, really a simple equation because how did we do it? We said 2 to the n is equal to 2 cubed. And, of course, we then equated the exponents because the bases were the same. So n is equal to 3. There was no problem with this at all. Now, the problem is, with the equation we're dealing with, if we, it's not going to work as easy as that. So as Mvela mentioned, we need to deal with this, this problem using logarithms. And okay. help me through this one. Let's, let's, let's look at this. Okay, if we apply, I suppose if we apply logs to this, the whole concept of logs, and see how it works, it's going to be very easy to apply this. So uh, let's work try with it. me let's on this. Yeah, Can okay. you take logs on both sides? Okay, so let me write this equation here quickly. Here we go. 2 to the n Plus is to equal eight. to 8. Okay, so talk this to me. Logs. So that would be log. Yeah. Log 2, two to, to the, the n equals to log of 8. Wonderful. And then? And then applying the rules of logs. So we can take n because n is an exponent to the front of the log. That would be n log 2 equals to log 8. And we can divide by log 2 on both sides. So it would be n equals to log 8 over log 2. So you can simply use your calculator, punching log 8 divided by yeah. log should we, 2. Should we do that? Let's, 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 let's try. Let's look at the calculator. I think let's it's important. Um, one thing I do want to emphasize, um, the log laws. You probably, if you haven't done logs, you'll be totally confused here. But very simply, let, let's, let's look at this, this concept of logs on the calculator, and then we'll just quickly revise a log law on that. And you know, if you, if you know logs, you'll know this section. But um, bear with us, it's actually very, very straightforward. Let's have a look at it on the calculator. Let's go to the fraction button, and then punch in log 8, divide by log 2, we close the bracket and then equal sign. Yay, the answer is three. Isn't that amazing? That's Bella, so interesting. How logs actually deals with a simple equation. So we can apply that technique in dealing with that really dodgy equation.